I looked the man in the eye, I found it to be very straightforward and trustworthy. And we had a very good dialogue. I was able to get a sense of his soul. He's a man deeply committed to his country and the best interests of his country. There was no kind of diplomatic chit chat trying to throw each other off balance. There was a, a straightforward dialogue. And that's the beginning of a very constructive relationship. The year was 1941. The Nazis from Germany, led by dictator Adolf Hitler, were trying to conquer the world. It was the prime of the Second World War. France and Great Britain were the Allied forces. At that time, the US was not involved in World War II. Originally, the Soviet Union and Germany had a partnership in the war, and the Soviet Union was an Axis force. On August 23, 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed a pact called the German-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact that created a partnership between them to divide Eastern Europe. The pact stated that the two countries would not take any military action against each other for the next 10 years. In June 1941, the German-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact fell apart when Nazi forces invaded the Soviet Union. This led to the Soviet Union switching sides and joining the Allied forces. The US joined the Allied forces in World War II on December 7, 1941 because of an attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan, an Axis force. It had started to view the Soviet Union as a country being run over by fascist forces and this led to the two countries being on the same side. This wartime cooperation was extremely important and developed out of necessity. The US and the Soviet Union realized that they needed one another to defeat one of the most dangerous and destructive forces of the 20th century. Three months after the invasion of the Soviet Union by Germany, the US passed a law called the Lend-Lease Act of March in 1941. It was an extremely important piece of legislation passed by President Franklin Roosevelt. Around $11 billion worth of war materials was given to the Soviet Union by the US to help change the course of the war. Together, the US and Soviet Union defeated the Nazis. Later, they met at the Potsdam Conference, which helped them defeat Japan, ending World War II for good. However, their diplomatic alliance did not last. Following the surrender of the Nazis in May 1945, near the end of World War II, the uneasy wartime alliance between the US and the Soviet Union began to unravel. America and the Soviet Union soon became military world powers. Their governments were fundamentally different, and this caused tension between them. The Soviet Union was based on a communist society. Joseph Stalin, the leader at the time, wanted to promote communism to the rest of Europe. By 1948, the Soviets had installed communist governments in the countries of Eastern Europe, like Belarus and Ukraine, that had been liberated by the Red Army. The Red Army was a Soviet army created by the communist government after the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. The U.S. had a capitalist society that wanted to limit the spread of communism around the world. They feared Soviet domination of Eastern Europe and the threat of Soviet-influenced communist parties coming to power. In communist countries, people were not allowed to own land, follow their religious beliefs, or speak and act freely. Americans were afraid that the Soviets would take over the U.S. and take away their freedoms. Both the U.S. and Soviet Union believed that their way of government was the best, and they stood by that belief. In the end, there were disputes between the Soviet Union and the US, such as the Soviet takeover of East European states. This debate inevitably led to a Cold War between the two countries in 1947. The Cold War was not an actual war, it was a tense period of time where the US and Soviet relations were at their worst, but citizens lived in constant fear of a nuclear war breaking out. There were also many other events that drastically increased tensions between the US and Soviet Union, such as the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis was when the Soviet Union tried to place missiles in Cuba to counter the US. Leaders between the countries exchanged means of letters over many hectic weeks. The crisis ended with negotiation between the two countries, where the US agreed not to invade Cuba, and the Soviet Union dismantled the missiles it had placed there. Another event that increased tensions was the space race. On April 12, 1961, the Soviet Union lifted Yuri Gagarin into space, the first human being to travel into the unknown void at the time. This gave the Soviet Union an early lead to the space race and pressured the US to come up with better technology. On July 20, 1969, the US put the first man on the moon, which not only was a giant leap for mankind, but a victory for the US in the space race. Even though the space race was an amazing achievement in technology and capability, it was a competition that only worsened the relations between the US and Soviet Union. Besides the US and the Soviet Union, their relations were extremely important to the outside world. The results of a disastrous relationship had terrible consequences for the outside world. The Cold War split the rest of the world into three sections that were communist, capitalist, or neutral, and caused incredible tension. 
Even though there was no violence in the Cold War itself, brutal wars started just because of it. Just two of the many major wars that started due in part to the Cold War were the Korean War and Vietnam War. Both were gruesome wars with many casualties, forces backed by the Soviet Union were fighting anti-communist forces backed by the US. Both countries had military involvement in many places to fight for their side. They provided weapons, troops, and medical supplies. The Cold War rivalry also played out in the Third World, in places like Latin America and Africa, which caused even more deaths. The Communist Party of the Soviet Union started to gain more wealth and power, while their citizens faced starvation. There was an extreme money divide that couldn't be solved. This caused citizens to backlash against the Soviet Union. There were also foreign attacks on their economy and revolutions all over Eastern Europe. This caused tensions between the Soviet Union and other countries. These problems overwhelmed the Soviet Union and its government could not afford to stay as one big union. On December 31st, 1991, the Soviet Union ceased to exist. This had major effects on the world. Democracy started to take hold. A country that had a complex relationship with America disappeared. However, Russia was taking rise from the shadows. When the Soviet Union broke up into many parts, the U.S. relations got better for many of the countries that were once part of the Soviet Union, such as Georgia and Armenia. But Russia, which was the largest portion of the Soviet Union, continued to strike the United States as an unfriendly figure. They used authoritarian tactics, so they continued to have tense relations. Russian and American relations today depend majorly on the current leader. Russian President Vladimir Putin does not have good relations with current U.S. President Joe Biden. We have a bilateral relationship that has deteriorated to what is the lowest point in recent years. In regards to Russia, Joe Biden said, We're not seeking conflict with Russia. We want a stable, predictable, predictable relationship. Our two nations share incredible responsibilities, and among them, ensuring strategic stability and upholding arms control agreements. I take that responsibility seriously. But I've been clear, the United States will respond in a robust and meaningful way when the Russian government engages in harmful activities. In May 2021, a Russian hacking group named DarkSide hacked the Colonial Pipeline, the largest pipeline system for refined oil products in the U.S. successfully. It was the biggest cyber attack on physical operations at a critical infrastructure in U.S. history. To add to this, they asked for the ransom in cryptocurrency for $2.3 million that the U.S. paid. Putin denied any knowledge of the hackings and called on Biden to reach an agreement with him on cyberspace. This is an ongoing debate between the U.S. and Russia. Besides cybersecurity, Russia has been forming an alliance with other countries such as China. On November 24, 2021, Russia's defense chief signed a roadmap for closer military ties with China pointing to increasingly frequent U.S. strategic bomber flights near both countries' borders. This could show that the two countries are increasing military buildup together. The course of Russian and U.S. diplomatic relations in history has been governed by the leader in power. Since Russian President Vladimir Putin is staying in office until 2036 due to a law he passed, America has a major role in determining the relationship between presidents. Many technological advancements have made the countries more competitive, such as the internet, software, cryptocurrency, and misinformation. Although Russia is more democratic than the Soviet Union, it is still more authoritarian than the U.S. Both countries have admitted that their relationship is unsatisfactory. There is still a hope for a successful diplomatic relationship with Russia in the future. On April 8, 2010, the US and Russia signed the Strategic Nuclear Arms Control Agreements that control the use of arms and missiles. Begun in November 1969, by May 1972, the Strategic Arms Limitation had produced the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, which limited the strategic missile defenses. They are also negotiating a treaty on limiting climate change. In addition to these negotiations, the United States and Russia have worked together extensively on mutually beneficial research projects through efforts like the International Space Station and the ITER project. Both countries stand gain from pursuing research in fields ranging from space to nuclear fission to chemistry, and the economics of staffing and supplying these projects will still justify working together to minimize costs. Agreements like these could show that U.S.-Russia relations are changing for the better and could possibly impact their future. Russian relations with America have changed greatly throughout the years because of different values, competitions and wars between US and Russia, and different governments having opposing views. Though right now, their diplomatic relations are a failure, they can turn into a success. Two world powers with thousands of nuclear warheads and billions spent on defense, once allies, then enemies. With advancements in technology, different people holding office, and consequential decisions, the relations of the U.S. and Russia have influenced the entire world, 
changing the course of history and perhaps even the future.